Tracy uh, became deaf by uh, spinal meningitis. And not to panic anybody, but uh, we found out about it. Uh, it was a couple days after, or a day after Thanksgiving. She had all the symptoms of spinal meningitis, something we didn't recognize, got over the doctor and bingo in the hospital she went. Well, it was about four days after we had her home, I come walking in the door, and Noelle said, I think there's something wrong with Tracy's hearing. I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, she's not responding, watch. So I just walked Tracy. up behind her and slapped my hands as hard as I could. No response. So we knew we had a problem. Well, I would like to go over now with you uh, kind of a summary of the studies we've done on Tracy. As you know, we have done rather extensive testing to determine as nearly as we can exactly what she hears. Now, our conclusions are that Unfortunately, Tracy is very profoundly deaf. And at the present time, we're not sure we're getting any responses to any of the levels of our audiometric testing. Mm -hmm. I do remember on occasion uh, having to tell parents that their child was deaf. And this always, to me, was a very difficult thing to do. I felt that, you know, it, it, it just seemed like I was telling them that this child would never really be like them, that this child would never learn their language. And uh, I always found it to be difficult. And I felt if there was anything that anybody could do about that, it would certainly be worthwhile. When I was first told that Tracy was deaf, I was also told that she would lose her speech. Um, there had been no change in her speech whatsoever, just her hearing. She didn't get what I said to her. And it took about a month, and then her speech started to slur a little bit. She would be moving her lips like she was talking, and no sound came out. You want to take it out? Okay. Yeah, yeah it, put it in the basket. Okay, and we got to save some for Mary, too. Twenty years of research have led to the events that you're about to see. Tracy, a normal, healthy, happy child, was suddenly and totally deafened by meningitis in the last months of her second year of life. And because of the very profound effects of this deafness on her future, we elected to give her a cochlear implant. This had never been done before in a child of this age. Now, to explain a cochlear implant, actually it's a device which is implanted above and behind the ear at surgery. And I have here a temporal bone, which is the part of the bone just inside the ear that contains the hearing and balance mechanism. This is the internal coil that's mounted just above and behind the ear, and then two wires lead from this to the inner ear and stimulate the sense of hearing. After a period of healing, usually about two months, we then fit an external device. This consists of a microphone that picks up the sound, converts it into an electric impulse. Now, this electric impulse is processed in a box that looks like a hearing aid, and the electricity is then sent to the external coil that is worn over the internal coil just above and behind the ear. Now, this does seem like a rather simple device, and in many ways it is, but it can have some very profound effects. Maybe people can get some dinner and get some rest tonight.
We'll certainly see you all in the morning. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah, she's gonna, looks like she's gonna be quite sleepy for probably another half an hour, an hour, but she is responding now. But everything's just going real well, I'm very pleased. Surgery was right, so everything was just great. It's okay. It's okay. Now we'll get this off. Okay, you wanna take it off? <laughs> Tracy. Okay. There we are. Icky boy. I know it's icky. Icky. <laughs> well, since Tracy's operation, uh, I've noticed one big change in our family, and that's that our attitudes, they're flying about 200% high right now. She came out, she got, she had a ball at the hospital. We come home and it seems like everything's just been totally, instead of fighting uphill, we're on top of the hill now. Larry's spirits are way up, mine are, Noel, Tracy. I mean, it's just really incredible from three months ago when it looked like the whole world had fallen in on us. All of a sudden we're on top of it. And we're really extremely anxious for June 8th. I am in particular because it's my birthday and I can't think of a better birthday present to see my daughter and the expression when she receives sound again. See this? Okay. Let's see here, Tracy. Okay. We'll fit this right on the over her ear here. I can get it to hang on just right. And then the magnet holds this in place. Okay. Now that's pretty well centered there. Now we have the device down here, which is what we turn on for her hearing. Okay. Is she actually getting sound? I don't think so. Good. Go, go, go. Green. Green? 
Yes, he seems to be here now. <laughs> Did you see that? Strawberry shortcake. So pretty. Little bit. There's a big difference between Tracy with the implant on and off. Uh, with the implant on, she's okay. not frustrated. With it off, it's total frustration. For your left foot. Left foot. Left foot. Uh, there's so many differences. It's it's just like the difference between night and day. I'm cold. Happy. Happy. 